Good evening, and welcome to Third Church, New York City. Let's by, begin by singing hymn number 275. <coughs> I'll read the first verse. Praise now, creative mind, maker of earth and heaven. Glory and power to him belong. Joy of the sun and skies, strength where the hills arise. So let us praise with joy and song. Hymn number 275. I'll read from the Bible and correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. This week's readings investigate divine creativity. The Holy Bible, King James Version. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Psalms. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. Genesis. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested 
from all his work which God created and made. Isaiah, lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. Psalms, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Isaiah. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee. Ephesians, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Psalms, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Isaiah O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundations with sapphires. And I will make thy windows of agates and thy gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression. Psalms Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us, yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. Ecclesiastes he hath made everything beautiful in his time. First Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, <clears throat> to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discern discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, 
and all the members of that one body being many, are one body, so also is Christ. James, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Second Corinthians, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Revelation, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, they are, and were created. <clears throat> and from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. There is but one creator and one creation. This creation consists of the unfolding of spiritual ideas and their identities, which are embraced in the infinite mind and forever reflected. These ideas range from the infinitesimal to infinity, and the highest ideas are the sons and daughters of God. Sometime we shall learn how Spirit, the great architect, has created men and women in science. The divine mind, not matter, creates all identities, and they are forms of mind. The ideas of spirit, apparent only as mind, never as mindless matter, nor the so-called material senses. God creates and governs the universe, including man. The universe is filled with spiritual ideas, which he evolves, and they are obedient to the mind that makes them. Genesis 1, 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. All questions as to the divine creation being both spiritual and material are answered in this passage, for though solar beams are not yet included in the record of creation, still there is light. Spirit, God, has created all in and of himself. Spirit never created matter. There is nothing in spirit out of which matter could be made, for, as the Bible declares, without the logos, the eon, or word of God, was not anything made that was made. Infinite mind creates and governs man from the mental molecule to infinity. This divine principle of all expresses science and art throughout his creation and the immortality of man and the universe. Creation is ever appearing and must ever continue to appear from the nature of its inexhaustible source. Christ's Christianity is the chain of scientific being reappearing in all ages maintaining its obvious correspondence with the scriptures and uniting all periods in the design of God. Spirit, God, gathers unformed thoughts into their proper channels and unfolds these thoughts even as he opens the petals of a holy purpose in order that the purpose may appear. Beauty is a thing of life which dwells forever in the eternal mind and reflects the charms of his goodness in expression, form, outline, and color. 
It is love which paints the petals, which paints the petal with myriad hues, glances in the warm sunbeam, arches the cloud with the bow of beauty, blazons the night with starry gems, and covers earth with loveliness. The artist is not in his painting. The picture is the artist's thought objectified. The human belief fancies that it delineates thought on matter. But what is matter? Did it exist prior to thought? Matter is made up of supposititious mortal mind force. But all might is divine mind. Thought will finally be understood and seen in all form, substance, and color, but without material accompaniments. From the infinite elements of the one mind emanate all form, color, quality, and quantity, and these are mental, both primarily and secondarily. Christians rejoice in secret beauty and bounty, hidden from the world, but known to God. Mind is not necessarily dependent upon educational processes. It possesses of itself all beauty and poetry and the power of expressing them. Spirit, God, is heard when the senses are silent. We are all capable of more than we do. The influence or action of soul confers a freedom which explains the phenomena of improvisation and the fervor of untutored lips. A musician demonstrates the beauty of the music he teaches in order to show the learner the way by practice as well as precept. The realization that all in harmony is unreal brings objects and thoughts into human view in their true light and presents them as beautiful and immortal. Harmony in man is as real and immortal as in music. Discord is unreal and mortal. In the infinitude of mind, matter must be unknown. Symbols and elements of discord and decay are not products of the infinite, perfect, and eternal all. From love and from the light and harmony which are the, which are the abode of spirit, only reflections of good can come. All things beautiful and harmless are ideas of mind. Mind creates and multiplies them and the product must be mental. Harmony is produced by its principle, is controlled by it, and abides with it. Divine principle is the life of man. Man's happiness is not, therefore, at the disposal of physical sense. Truth is not contaminated by error. Harmony in man is as beautiful as in music, and discord is unnatural, unreal. The science of music governs tones. If mortals caught harmony through material sense, they would lose harmony. If time or accident robbed them of material sense. To be masters of chords and discords, the science of music must be understood. The periods of spiritual ascension are the days and seasons of mind's creation in which beauty, sublimity, purity, and holiness, yea, the divine nature, appear in man and the universe, never to disappear. Mind, the only I or us, the only spirit, soul, divine principle, substance, 
life, truth, love. The one God, not that which is in man, but the divine principle or God of whom man is the full and perfect expression. All things are created spiritually. Mind, not matter, is the creator. God, spirit alone created all and called it good. Let's pray for the congregation first silently, then repeat together the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let's sing hymn number 111. High in the heavens, eternal God, Thy goodness in full glory shines. Thy truth shall break through every cloud that veils and darkens thy designs. Hymn number 111.
This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. All services are now held online and in person. Third Church offers Sunday school classes online and in person for children and teens. These free one-hour classes are held each Sunday. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. For more information on times and classes, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. Third Church maintains a reading room on the first floor of this building. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study, and all are welcome. Here you may purchase books and recordings on Christian science. The reading room also has the latest issues of the Christian Science Monitor, an award-winning international news weekly, available to read or purchase. Reading room hours are Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. Christian science is practical and it heals. Our meeting is now open for all to share experiences of healing and spiritual insights that prove God's ever presence and power in their lives. If you're listening by telephone and would like to share, press star six and wait until your line is unmuted. Please speak directly into the microphone of your phone. Don't use the speakerphone. This way, your message will be easier to hear. If you're watching by Zoom, you can, raise, you can choose the raise your hand icon or unmute yourself and speak. Thank you for your inspiring readings. Uh, you read many of my favorite passages from the Bible and science and health. Um, I'd like to express gratitude for the role Christian science has often played in my creative work and in my teaching. Um, whenever I've turned to Christian science for uplift or guidance or direction, uh, it has been there for me in, in, the, in that area. <clears throat> I'm thinking of two particular situations where Christian science, uh, one in which it actually turned the whole, a whole situation around. Uh, I had been doing a, a, a devised theater piece uh, which was largely improvised with a large group of people. And the night before we were to get an audience which was to participate uh, in it, everything fell apart. I had never witnessed in all my time anything so so awful. Um, and so we all went home and, and thought, well, let's, we've got to figure out a way to come back tomorrow with an audience and, and, and do better. And I called a practitioner with whom I had worked uh, uh, you know, off and on for, for many years, and she uh, came into science as, um, as a painter. And I told her, you know, that we had all worked very hard and we thought we had a good thing, but it just felt, fell apart. 
and she was actually working for the uh, for the production, I think, if I can remember. Uh, and she said, you know, we talked about one mind and one soul and harmony and principle and all that kind of thing. And uh, the next night when we got there and we had an audience, um, it couldn't have gone better. I have uh, I have no uh, reason to doubt that it was because of that work. It was not an accident. Uh, another time I was uh, doing a, a Shakespeare production, which was going very, very well, but it still had to come together. There were lots of music cues and light cues, and it was a big cast, and there was very little technical preparation because it was a, um, a project uh, which we rehearsed for six weeks, but only had about four or five hours in the theater with the lighting people and the, the costumes and all that kind of thing. So it was a, a, a rather hectic uh, time, and it didn't seem to be going badly, but I thought the next day, let me just have some practitioner help for myself, uh, just so that I stay calm and that I come into the process with um, confidence, and um, and so I did call the practitioner. I don't even know if I mentioned the, the, what was going on that day, uh, uh, not in detail anyway. Um, and it was one of those rare situations where everything came together in the most perfect way and one would have thought we had days and days and days with the technical crew instead of the four or five or six hours. And uh, it was such a, not only was I happy and everyone was happy because it went well, of course, um, but I was happy because throughout the entire uh, time, the perform prep time and, and performance time, I felt absolutely embraced by divine principle and harmony. And so I'm grateful that uh, uh, God's creative governance is always there for us when we seek it. Thank you. Thank you for your readings from the depths. Um, in the lesson we did this week, the last week, there was a, a discussion or a treatment in science and health mental surgery and how to probe a thought and to uh, excision of error in thought. Um, the, uh, I think that the rule for motives has an example of the excision of error when it says uh, Christian science reflects the three amenities of love in rebuking sin, true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. Um, I believe that, that that's how we try to help one another. That's how we're instructed to help one another. Uh, that's how uh, evil or, or sin is to be rebuked. Um, I think it also reflects God's loving way of excising thought with great patience and, um, and forgiveness and loving kindness and, uh, well, more than brotherliness, father than brotherliness. Um, in, in, Christi in Christian science, uh, it teaches that the belief of life and matter is not true. It's not real, that we are spiritual and that we live in spirit. And the belief of living in, in matter and being mortals and dying and, and being born and dying is given uh, a term for this belief is, or the activity of this belief is, is animal magnetism. And it's not in common parlance, but it's sort of unique to uh, Christian science and teachings of Mary Baker Eddy, but uh, dealing, uh, we're taught how to deal with this belief of life and matter. And uh, it's a belief of separation from God. 
recently circumstances were such and things that I had been entertaining and thought were, uh, I could feel that it was taking me down in, uh, into a, a mental uh, dark, low point. And I wanted to fight back. And that uh, the idea, the, the word, the thought that was helpful to me was that I'm not separated from God. There was a lecturer recently that uh, said, you know, if we say, well, that problem is too much for me, um, that's, that's for better Christian scientists. Um, that is a belief in being separated from God. And we want to claim our oneness with God at all times, because that is the spiritual reality. We're reflections. We're at one with the Father. That's our life, is to express and to reflect God. And that was like a, a Jacob night for me, a, a wrestling. And that, that thought, I woke up the, 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 in the morning having struggled with this thought, woke up in the morning with such hope, such, uh, you know, renewed uh, thinking. We study the, 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 the books, we study uh, Christian science, we read the lesson, we study the lesson, and it's all helpful. You know, it, it arms us with tools with, and it tells us uh, how we can grapple with thought. But there are times when the right ideas come that it's sort of not scholarly, it's not scholastic, it's not, it's not study, it's God with us, giving us the ideas we need. And I'm, I'm very grateful for this, uh, this strengthening, uh, illuminating um, activity of the church and of the teachings of Christian science. Thank you. I'd like to share a healing of our little dog a couple Sundays ago before church. Um, I was here at church getting ready for the first service. Uh, and um, at home, my daughter had given our little dog a meatball to eat. And um, most of you know her. She's a Chihuahua Yorkie and a uh, little bit bigger than a pigeon. and a little bit smaller than a cat. And evidently this meatball was too much. She gobbled it down and became very uncomfortable, tried to jump off the couch where she was sitting and just kind of splatted on the floor and couldn't get up. And her tummy was making funny noises and she was having difficulty breathing. And so Sarah, my daughter, called me and I had just been going over the lesson, practicing it for the reading. And it was so full of God's tender care for his little ones. And um, I just prayed along those lines. Um, also that, um, is this is a quote from Science and Health, but not a quote, I'm going to try and paraphrase it. Um, God removes property properly whatever is offensive. So if this needed to come out or go down smoothly, that, that could happen because she's a spiritual being and things run smoothly, and the healing changes over from the inharmony to harmony. Um, and as I prayed, um, I, I'll usually start my prayer with one of my favorite versions of the Lord's Prayer, and I'm going to read it. <clears throat> this is, it, it's, it's the Lord's Prayer, but it's the translation from Luke 11, 2 to 4, from the revised uh, New Testament, Modern English, revised J.B. Phillips. And it starts, here's how it goes. Father, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. And as I read this, I applied it to her. She is part of God. This dog is part of God's kingdom. Um, give us the bread we need each day. And of course, properly, not something that clogs in the throat. And forgive us our failures, 
for we give for we forgive everyone who fails us and keep us clear of temptation and i have this written out because i like to look at it a lot and i took a picture of it and sent it to my daughter and she read it and she the part that struck her was forgive us our failures for we forgive everyone who fails us she felt guilty she felt like she had failed the dog by giving her too big of a chunk of meat and that's what had caused the problem. She could have cut it in pieces. Um, but that calmed her, and she realized that God was being honored here. God's kingdom was being showed to us, shown to us here, and that we could be clear of the temptation of believing that there could be a problem with, with um, digestion or whatever. And um, with that, the little dog started, the stomach stopped gurgling, she started breathing normally, and she jumped up and ran around the room, and then um, found her favorite pillow and made this digging movement into the pillow, um, per, which was an indication she was perfectly fine. Everything was good, good to go. Um, I'm grateful that we can calm our own fears for our loved ones whether people or dogs or parakeets, whatever. I'm grateful that we have right at our, right right with us, prayers that we know by heart, um, prayers found in the Bible and Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy, and the precedent for how many thousands of years since Jesus prayed, and, and before that, the prophets prayed and brought healing, um, aligned what seemed to be a material problem to the spiritual reality, and healing came. And I'm grateful, so grateful to be a part of this tradition um, and to be able to practice in this tradition. Thank you all for sharing. Thanks for being here with us. Let's conclude our meeting by singing hymn, hymn number 51. Eternal mind the potter is, and thought the eternal clay. The hand that fashions is divine. His works pass not away. Man is the noblest work of God. His beauty, power, and grace Immortal, perfect as his mind, reflected face to face. Hymn number 51. <laughs> 